Zimbabwe believes it can pay off nearly $13 billion in external debt by 2025. This comes as President Emerson Munangagwa's re-engagement drive with the international community and a radical shift in foreign policy of being a friend to all and an enemy to none looks like it's beginning to bear fruit. Zimbabwe's finance minister, Mthuli Nkube, said Harare will do all it can to clear its foreign debt by December 2025 to open fresh lines of credit that would help in revamping the floundering economy. Of the external debt, $5.89 billion is bilateral debt that is owed to other countries, whereas $2.7 billion is multilateral debt borrowed from lenders such as the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the African Development Bank. Most of what Zimbabwe owes these lenders, around $2.47 billion, is arrears and penalties for not paying. And the finance minister says Zimbabwe is committed to servicing its debt despite the country's poor economic performance over the past three decades. Dr. Prosper Chitambara, developmental economist, joins me now. Dr. Chitambara, welcome to Business Edge once again. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So, with all of our conversations about Zimbabwe, the question really is about what progress has been made concerning the debt conversation. So let's start from there. Uh, where we stand as of today, right now, somewhere in August, very early days in the month of August, what do we know about any possible progress that's being made uh, with Zimbabwe's creditors, external creditors in specific terms now, when it comes to reaching a debt deal? Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, so what government has done is to establish a high-level structured debt platform, which actually is bringing together all the creditors, all the development partners, government itself, civil society organizations, the private sector, and of course other key relevant stakeholders and partners within the whole debt matrix in Zimbabwe. And uh, they've actually asked the president of the African Development Bank be the debt champion or the arrears clearance champion uh, for Zimbabwe. And there is a high level facilitator in, in the name of the former president of uh, Mozambique, Joachim Chisano. So to date, uh, about five meetings have actually been held and consensus has actually been reached on some of the key milestones, some of the key reforms around the economy around governance issues, around institutional reforms. So mm -hmm. I think there is now consensus among all these key stakeholders within the high-level uh, dialogue uh, platform uh, on what needs to be done and the clear milestones and benchmarks uh, with respect to the economy, the economic reforms, the governance reforms, including political uh, reforms. Um, I think that's also very, very critical and other institutional reforms, anti-corruption reforms. So, so I would say I think a, a, a bit of progress has actually been done. I think what's now left is uh, the actual implementation. Of course, a lot has already been happening as well in terms of implementation, but I think we need to see more reforms, especially around institutional key institutional reforms that are being implemented, key governance reforms mm. uh, being implemented uh, in order to address obviously the high external areas okay because without addressing go ahead finish your thoughts yeah i'm saying without addressing that, that cocktail of, of reforms then i think it will be difficult even to unlock fresh investments investments into the economy and also to ensure that uh, we address the high country's premium Mm -hmm. or the high risk uh, factor that's associated with doing business and investing in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe. All right, so it seems that from what you're saying, the optimism that the finance minister and the government are sharing right now is not misplaced uh, optimism in terms of the potential for this ambitious payoff of external debts by 2025. So the acting information uh, director yeah. talked about a radical shift in foreign policy and also the president's re-engagement drive. So let's look at that before we get into sort of the framework and uh, the, con uh, the consensus that's being reached. How do you think this radical shift in, in foreign policy this, the president's re-engagement drive, how is that bearing fruit for the, uh, for the debt talks that Zimbabwe is looking to finalize? Well, I think um, in terms of the actual benefits, uh, uh, like in terms of growth, sustained growth, I think it's still a bit too early uh, to say. 
Uh, but some of the reforms, like uh, in terms of even infrastructure, the rollout of infrastructure investments, uh, th these are things that uh, require a bit of money, but that, that also take a bit of time to fully actualize. We, 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 government has been embarking on a number of uh, pro institutional projects, especially in an effort to try to bridge the huge infrastructure deficit, which is critical, I think, also in terms of unlocking sustained and inclusive growth. Because without sustained and inclusive growth, then it means the country is not creating additional wealth and revenues to be able to sustainably pay back uh, uh, those areas. So I would say I think a lot has been happening, uh, especially around infrastructure. Uh, but, but what we have not done as well, I think, is with respect to institutional reforms. Uh, because infrastructure, uh, institutions, and macroeconomic stability, in my view, are very, very critical in order to uh, incentivize sustained growth uh, within the economy, which is critical, like I said, uh, to deal, sustainably deal with the, with, with the debt areas. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think it's uh, it's uh, we are seeing positive signals, and uh, I, I think we need to obviously up the tempo. We need to stay the course in terms of implementing what we have already agreed uh, with, with with key partners, uh, mm -hmm. especially around politics, uh, governance, and uh, key institutions. So it, it's good you mentioned key partners because that's the next place I want us to go because the finance minister, as you said earlier, has talked about meeting representatives of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in the U.S. and agreeing to a framework for the country to repay its loans. Yeah. And you talked about uh, some form of um, consolidation and consensus on certain issues. So, uh, Dr. Chitabara, take us through that. In terms of what you think are some of the big takeaways we have so far from these meetings between uh, Zimbabwe's finance minister and high-level representatives of these multilateral institutions, what do we know about this framework? What do we know about this plan for Zimbabwe to pay back uh, its external debt or pay off its external debt by December 2025? Yeah, I think one, one key highlight is the staff monitored programs. So I think government is in discussions with the International Monetary Fund to, for a staff monitored program, which basically uh, sets out some of the key uh, milestones with respect to key macroeconomic reforms uh, that the country must actually implement. I think uh, some of the key issues that, that, that have been mentioned include the need to fully liberalize uh, the foreign exchange management. And of course, government earlier on, uh, uh, today, I think we've uh, heard that government is planning to abolish the auction system. Um, I think that's a move towards the full uh, liberalization of the foreign exchange uh, system. So I think that's one key um, uh, milestone that, that, that's, been, uh, that, that, that's been agreed or that's being agreed uh, between Zimbabwe and uh, a multilateral financial institutions, in particular mm. uh, the International Monetary Fund. But of course, what government has also done is that they've come up with uh, technical working groups uh, that are actually now doing the technical work in terms of uh, coming up with what needs to be done around three key areas, namely the economy, uh, then the issues of governance, and also the issue of the land, uh, including land tenure uh, issues. So okay. there, there are three technical working groups uh, that comprise a government, uh, the, the, the development partners, the creditors, and also the civil society uh, uh, organizations, but these are in, in the private sector, but these are more te technical in nature, and they're actually cobbling up uh, some of the key technical reforms that government must be implementing with respect to those three major areas around the economy, uh, land, and also around government, including obviously Mm -hmm. uh, human rights and, and, and politics. Okay, so Dr. Chinzabar, because of time, I have one very quick question. This is 13, nearly $13 billion in debt uh, that has been accumulated over a number of decades, a number of years. Dr. Chinzabar, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I, okay. I was saying it's actually about $14 billion according to the Okay, so we have massive amounts of debt accumulated and we're hearing of a very ambitious plan that wants to clear this foreign debt in particular by December 2025. Now, if we do the math, we're looking at just over 
two years, that comes to just about 28 months to make this uh, happen, to make this re uh, a reality. So very quickly as we wrap things up, do you think that this is a very realistic, feasible, and achievable goal considering Zimbabwe's economic history and its challenges? Or is it a good start, let's say, in terms of aim very high and as they say, you'll fall somewhere among the stars. You aim for the heavens, fall among the stars, and it's still a success. What do you think? I think it's uh, we, we, we are we're a bit overly ambitious. Uh, 2025, it's it's, it's 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 very very close. And uh, when you look at how our economy has actually been performing, we, we have been growing uh, quite uh, robustly, uh, quite robust and quite uh, sustainably. Uh, because clear those areas, our economy must be growing by not less by not less than a 10 percent. For the next, in fact, for the next five, for the next five to ten years, we need to be growing by at least ten uh, percent to be able to uh, make a significant debt towards uh, arrears clearance. Of course, that has not been the case. So it's not yet clear how even government is going to mobilize uh, the resources required uh, to clear those areas within. In the next 28 months, within the next few few years, mm -hmm. but uh, I think we should, we should be able to make some good progress, especially if we're able to ensure that our economy grows uh, sustainably at least for the next two years. If we can grow by at least seven percent, I think that will obviously contribute towards the expansion of the economy's productive capacity and base, which would help to generate uh, revenues uh, to be able. Uh, to make a significant uh, dent Impact. in terms of payment of these areas. All right. We'll leave the conversation as that, uh, at that. As you know, we're following very closely the situation with Zam uh, Zimbabwe and its creditors and how that develops and plays out in the long run. So, Dr. Prosper Chisambara, I know we'll be seeing you again very soon. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.